Those are the new 300 millimeter zip wake interceptors, similar to a trim tab. Uh, this is a factory offering from Yarcraft for the last couple of years. We started running them in 2017 and they've been absolutely amazing. I think they allow a boat to do what it was designed to do in, in a few different ways. One, you can create lift off the corners so you can accommodate for a, a, a bad list or uh, an uneven boat if it's just if the weight's distributed wrong you can work them you can have them work in unison so that you can actually put some pressure on the bow so that you're not lifting off a wave and you're always in the perfect position to reconnect with the following wave i think the most important thing though is you're able to square up with waves the right way and when you square up with the wave right that impact the wave has across the boat is evenly distributed across the stringer assembly all the way to the transom so you're actually doing your boat a favor in the long run by having the majority of those wave impacts distribute the, the force evenly instead of just slapping the sides hard like you would if you didn't have a tabbing system. So I can show you where the controller is mounted right here. I prefer to actually keep it to the left of the steering wheel. When it's here, I have easy reach with my just my fingertips so I can keep my hand on the throttle at all times and I can manipulate the interceptors with just my fingers or my thumb you know, barely taking my hand off the wheel, which is a little bit more forgiving, especially in a big chop compared to the throttle handle. And I have a lot of people asking me how I like to set these up for optimal performance. So that's what I wanted to show you today. I was just going to dig into the menu system a little bit and remit the menu settings and get it tuned up right so that I can show you how I have it set up for this boat. Okay, here's a quick rundown of the controller and the settings I like to do from the get go. Uh, here's the starboard, or the, I'm sorry, here's the port interceptor, here's the starboard interceptor. That's the percentage of deployment, and you can see how the interceptors are gradually going down. Actually, they're, they're, they're maxed out right now. And you can see how I did that really quick. And that happened really quick because the, the, my favorite setting that I have on here is I, I go into interceptor setup, and I go to manual control rate high. That means for every little click of the dial here, whether I'm going, let me go back here, every little click of the dial here, if I go, I want to run the boat left, roll the boat right, pin the bow, whatever. Just a couple clicks and you probably have the setting that you want. So that's a that's the best feature right there. 90% um, of the time I have this thing set up in manual mode. Manual mode uh, just allows me to make the, the, the fine tune the adjustments on the fly with, with every angle deviation as I'm driving. You know, it, 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 I usually can keep up ahead of, I can anticipate what the boat's about to do versus the auto settings trying to react to what the boat's doing based on the leveling of it. But sometimes the auto features are pretty nice, especially if you're graphing around and you're not really paying attention to your to your angles or anything like that. All you gotta do is push the auto button and it enables an auto pitch and an auto roll. So this is, there's a gyro in here that it can actually monitor the leveling of your boat and make adjustments based on that. You can fine tune those adjustments. So if you want to actually override what it has by just a few increments, plus four, plus eight, or the other way around, you can do that. Now on the back end here, there's actually a, there's a pitch curve. If you go into auto setup, there is a pitch curve and you can, for every mile an hour increment that you have here, you can fine tune the level of deployment that you want your interceptors to be at to give you the best ride possible. Here's one thing I do like to do when I'm driving my zip wakes in auto. You see the auto pitch is on and the auto roll is on. You push it one more time, you disable auto roll. I prefer to have auto pitch on, manual roll on. That way I can always do this to fine tune my leveling, but it is trying to hunt for the most proper pitch based on the speed that I have. So that's kind of a, that's a, that's a great auto setting if you're just out graphing around, not paying much attention, and you want the boat to do most of the, you want the zip wake to do most of the work for you. It, when, um, before you do have this set up though, you are gonna wanna go into reset pitch and roll. And this is something you can do while you're on the trailer on flat ground. The boat, was, boat, the boat is completely level and it's kind of sitting at the attitude that you would want it to be sitting at on the water when auto is trying to reset it back to where you zeroed it at. So you're going to go to reset pitch and roll. You're going to reset both the pitch and the roll. And you're going to want to make sure that your controller here, you know, this controller is on a little ram mount right here. You're going to want to make sure that that's locked into place because it zeroes it based on the positioning of this controller basically. So once you have those three basic settings set up on this, you reset your pitch in the roll, you take it out and you kind of fine tune and recalibrate the auto pitch and the auto roll for your, for your settings and your preferences, which may change day by day. And you set that manual control rate to high. So when you are working this with, uh, you know, just in manual mode, it happens, you know, the adjustments are made as fast as possible. Basically these things are good to go from that point forward. No problems, 
It is, uh, it's an amazing system that makes your boat do exactly what you want it to do. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks, guys.